coming up in episode 62. You have to set a goal. You have to know exactly what you want. And you have to stop saying, I don't know what I want. You have to pick something. Mm -hmm. After that, you have to make a plan on how you're going to get there. And making a plan means building the time into your schedule every day, taking things off your plate to make that time, and being smart about it. to another episode of The Little Radio Show. My name is Sandra Fernandez, and I'm joined by my co-hosts Juan Alanis and Angelica Casares, and we're bringing you small talk about big topics. This week, we're on a recording hiatus, so we're revisiting two segments from October of 2015. In the first, Juan, Angelica, and I tell ghost stories. In the second segment, we are revisiting the wonderful conversation that we had with Kathy Cano Murillo, also known as Crafty Chica. Just a reminder that you can catch us every week on Thursdays at 2 p.m. Central Time on hmsnetradio.org. Our show archives and the link to our iTunes and Stitcher channels are available at thelittleradioshow.com. So as we all know, Halloween is right around the corner and we're kind of excited. Uh, we're, we're actually very excited. I, myself, and Juan and Sandra. And we were having this conversation over dinner the other day about Halloween stories and kind of scary Halloween stories. And so I have a few Halloween stories. I well, not Halloween stories. I have a few like like sp- like I s- scared myself. Yes, ghost stories. <laughs> They're not necessarily ghost stories because I've never seen anything. Well, no, no, no. I backtrack. I did see something, but I'm not sure if it was a ghost or it was my eyes like playing tricks on me. Okay, so let me go ahead and go into one of the stories. <laughs> I have a good. I, was, I have a good ghost story. I'll just say that. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> Wait, oh, first, you gotta let me say mine. Okay, so back in the day when I was younger, my younger years, um, in my teens, actually, I had a couple of friends who would come over often to our house, and my mother's old house has two stories. And the top story is two bedrooms, and the lower level has kind of everything else, the kitchen, you know, the living room, and so on and so forth. And as my friends were sitting down on the sofa, and I was, I had just come from upstairs, and I had just walked downstairs, and they we were all sitting on the sofa. Nobody else was in the house but me mm-hmm. and my friends. All of a sudden, we hear someone walking down the stairs like you can hear it throughout the house and it's it's bam 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 and we kind of stop together no we were all somebody upstairs (laughs) totally not we're all together we we stop dead in the conversation that we're having and we look at each other and we're just staring at each other and she's like did you hear that i was like yeah i heard that Wait, how many people were there there was three of us i was like yeah i totally heard that and she's like uh what was that you know but the thing was i wasn't scared like i didn't feel like a bad presence or anything like that but i hear it and the thing is that we hear things at my mom's house a two-story house all the time this wasn't was new it like for me. steps or was it just like or was it like creaking no 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 it was steps hmm. it was step. i don't know how to i don't know how to say that to this day when i see her she always reminds me of that do you remember that one time when we heard those, like, somebody coming down the stairs and there was nobody there? And I'm like, yeah, I know. I remember. I get it. I get but, but it. did you see anything? <laughs> no, no. We didn't see anything. You didn't see anything? We uh, didn't see anything. But, you know, I'm going to What would you have done if you saw something? Ran. <laughs> <laughs> the logical thing to do was run. So I used to work in an, in an office building. Um, oh. in, a, in an office building that Carpet. was um, re- that was near several cemeteries. <laughs> Okay, mm. and I worked late all the time. Never bothered me at all. My a coworker and I went in on a Saturday, um, and we're there on a Saturday, and the fire alarm kept going off, and we would call the alarm company who was telling us that they didn't show anything that the fire alarm was going off, but they're not showing anything. I'm like, can you not hear it on the phone? They're like, yes, we can hear it, <laughs> but we're not showing anything. Fine. So we're we're there, and we heard. You know how it is in in an office. You can hear movement. We heard movement. Went out and took a look, and there's nothing, and it's fine. And then one of us goes, hello, and (laughs) down the hall, I swear to dear Lord, there was a hello, and we went up and down, and we could not find it. We convinced ourselves that it was echo. Echo. (laughs) We convinced ourselves that it was echo. Grabbed our stuff, left, and never worked a Saturday again. Let's see. Now, Sandra, you seem to be describing uh, like a scream movie because you're like, hello, and then you're walking down the hall. Oh, no. I peeked out, and look, it was my office. I was like, 
But I no, want to hear Juan's No, because Juan's you said story. you went out and you looked. No. Well, checked. we looked out in the hallway because we heard steps. But did you have a weapon? Of, why would I have a weapon in my Okay, office? so I'm assuming your story has a weapon then, Juan. <laughs> no, my story doesn't have a weapon. So let's hear it. Let's hear it. So my story is like when I was um, when I was a kid and I was like, I don't know, maybe like probably 10 or younger. And it, we were in my parents' ranch in Mexico. It, like it, this is like in the in the cerros, like mm-hmm. in the in the hills. And so, like we were like going from my mom's. The way that we had the the rancho set up is my grandma's house was probably um, maybe like two or three blocks from my parents' house. So we were walking in the night. It was dark. And in those days, we didn't have, there wasn't electricity and there wasn't like running water. So it was like pitch dark. So we like had, I don't know if we had a flashlight or we had like some type of lantern that we were using to like walk across the, back to my parents' house. But what we were leaving my grandma's house. It was like late at night. And there was like this pond um, in the middle between our, between their properties. And the pond had like a little hill that went over it and so as we were walking and it was literally everybody in my family like my mom except for my dad but my mom all my brothers and my sisters we were all walking like back together and all of a sudden we look over the hill and we see this like white like body like floating in the air oh my god and it was floating (laughs) over the it was floating in the air and we were actually we were going to my grandma's house first and it was in the night so when we walked over there it floated over the the hill and then when it got to the end of the hill, it disappeared. Mm-hmm. And so we all ran, like, nobody said anything. It was just like, everybody just was quiet. We were just, we were all like, we were holding hands and we were just like grasping tightly. each other's hands, like very, <laughs> very tightly. <laughs> and, uh, and we got there and then like, we opened the gate, we went inside. And then we, like, when we got to my grandma's house, we were like, did you see that? <laughs> <laughs> It's not real. And then <laughs> everybody was happen. like, yes. And then we were all like terrified. And then we had to walk back like, oh afterwards. God. And so like finally we were like dreading it. We were like putting it off like, no, we don't want to walk back. But then finally we had to all walk back. So we did the walk back. And again, when we walked back, the little white body like flew over the hill again and disappeared at the other end. And so we went back to the house. And again, we were like super freaked out. Did you see that again? And they're like, yes. And to this day... Like we're all terrified of like when we go to the rancho, and mm-hmm. none of us will be none of us want to be alone in my in my parents' house. We're like, no, it's too scary here. There's ghosts. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it's 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 funny because so many people will tell you that they don't believe in ghosts, but then they'll have a story yeah. about something that tells you, okay, yeah. well, they do believe in I ghosts. They I don't believe I it. don't believe in ghosts. I believe in presence. Like you can be in a presence of something just bad, and it just you feel funky. But see, I'm I, I do believe in ghosts. I like I've always believed in ghosts. After that, I'm like, no, I do believe that they're ghosts because I saw one. But it didn't help that when we were there, like we would like my cousins and and we would spend time just telling like scary stories to each other. See, here's so, the thing: y'all were summing them at this point. See, <laughs> again, belief right there. And if you guys have any ghost stories out there, let us know. Let us know what happened. I am so into them. So let Angelica know. <laughs> I would read them and we can have that conversation. I'll bring my rosary. And yes, even your version of La Llorona works. <laughs> so let us know. And uh, yeah, so share, please. And, um, and have a happy and safe Halloween. <laughs> Our guest today is the infamous, I would say, um, Crafty Chica. She's known online as Crafty Chica. And, you know, her first name is Kathy. But, um, and I always get a kick out of being able to say Kathy instead of Crafty Chica because I'm like, I know her. <laughs> <laughs> but if you're not familiar with, you must, you, you probably are living under a rock. <laughs> but Crafty Chica really um, is one of probably the premier and probably one of the most influential Hispanic voices in the digital space. Um, she has a her own line at Michael's um, for her crafts, and she does a lot of DIY and crafts. And you know, she's a public, published author of several books. And you know, she even has a cruise where people go on on a cruise with her <laughs> for several days, and they um, uh, do crafts and they do DIY projects. And so, we are very thrilled to have Kathy on the line um, with us today, and to tell us a little bit more, just to talk in general about her story and to share with us, you know, how she kind of got started. So, welcome, Kathy. Hi, thank you for having me. I don't have that button where they do that applause thing. <laughs> uh, I still want it right now. Okay, I'll do it for you. <laughs> so, Kathy. Oh, it, it's 
honor to be here. I love all that you guys do. I mean, you keep it going, and that's what it's all about. So, big hug. Well, well, thank you. Thank you. And I think that, you know, um, that's one of the things that we've always been impressed with. I think, you know, and I speak for the group here, um, you know, is the fact that you as an individual have really built um, an empire um, and really built a, a huge community of people who are who follow you and who believe in the work that you do. And so my main, my, I wanted to start the, the conversation by asking you a little bit about how you started and how you knew that the digital space was where you wanted to build this community. Well, the main thing is that I have always embraced free resources. Mm. And even before the digital space came about, just being an artist and needing to pay the bills, I would get a cardboard box and cut it up into rectangles and paint them and make magnets and sell them because the cardboard box was a free resource that I could use to make something and turn it around into income. Mm. And so back in the day, it was like everything from, you know, terracotta flower pots to any kind of wood pieces. Even my husband's um, grandmother, she ripped up her wood floor and gave us all the wood tiles. And we used each one of those as a canvas to make art on, like either as a a plaque or as a base for a sculpture or as a shadow box and we use those to sell them and it's just been that survival kind of thing of just always embracing free resources so (laughs) fast forward to where at that time we didn't have a, a specific business plan and we just took all of these orders like we had no idea we were filling a need in the market because we were making items that Latino centric home decor items that we didn't see at the store. And we didn't want like stereotypical tchotchkes. Like we wanted cool stuff. So we made them and we ended up with 300 um, wholesale accounts from wow. museum shops and gift stores and chain stores. And that got to be way too much. Like, even though it felt good to know that we hit a nerve on the market, we just couldn't keep up with it. We didn't know how to expand our business. And I went to work for the newspaper. And that's what I was going to say, because I I know that I know a little bit about your story. And I know that you were a journalist um, before as well. Yeah. And so, but the one thing, another tip, aside from embracing free resources is to, if you have to take a job to support your income or provide income, make it in an area that you love and that you want to learn in Mm. and that will help with your big picture. And so for me, I always, I love making things and I love writing. So I got in on the ground floor in the basement shredding newspapers when I started at the Arizona Republic. Oh, and wow. I didn't I know worked, that. <laughs> yeah, I did. I was there for about three months until I just interviewed with one of the features editors. And this is tip number three. <laughs> <laughs> it's when, when there's a certain protocol that society teaches us to follow, like, if you want to be a newspaper reporter, you have to have a journalism degree. And to have a journalism degree, you have to go to college and this and that. Well, you know what? I thought all they can tell me is no. I had an associate's degree in marketing. I went ahead for the interview for a features, inter, or a features clerk. Mm-hmm. And I ended up getting the job. Wow. Over these other journalism students because I was able to serve it in my interview and my editor just had that feeling like this would be the right thing and I mean ultimately I did go to night school to finish my bachelor's degree because it is a requirement to Mm -hmm. be a reporter you have to have your bachelor's degree so I just kind of did it in on my own terms instead of on the linear timeline 
that society presents us with. So I think we're I think we're all familiar uh, with that linear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you know, and so I went for it, and while I was there at the newspaper, they all had purchased my artwork before at the different stores, nice. and they asked me to write a craft column. That's awesome, And the Kathy. craft column would be, this was a really good tip, too, is that a tip number four I'm going to be giving <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Is that um, I had my own style of what I like to make, but it taught me to think for general market mm. and for broader scope. So I knew that I couldn't put a corazón on every single week on the Saturday craft column project. <laughs> like I had to design for general market because at the time Martha was huge. It, you know, she had her TV show and. And I thought, well, I can't be Martha because I can't just put one teal ribbon on something. Like, I have to load it up. With <laughs> now, now, tell us about that. Like, when you're doing yeah. something for general market and you're doing something for the Hispanic market, what's the difference? Right. I mean, Well, the thing is, is that um, I decided that I want it to be Kathy. Mm-hmm. And I didn't want to copy anybody else's style. And so what I would do... Is, and this is before Pinterest. This is like, I don't know, 2005, <laughs> 2004, somewhere around there. And I would look and see what was popular. I would look at the stores. I'd look at magazine pictures. I'd look online. And I would do my own version of that. And it served an area of people who weren't like Martha, who, who didn't want to do just super simple kind of things. And the other twist that I gave it, was everything had a meaningful angle to it, a sense of positivity to it. So everything, every project was more than just making something pretty. It had stuff like it was a memory box or it was an empowerment picture to hang up or it was, you know, here's a yarn company with yarn made by these business women in India or just something that, it had purpose to it. And at the time, I didn't realize I was doing that. That was just my natural hmm. personality, what I was drawn to. But lo and behold, that is what started gaining momentum, is that I was offering something different. And soon enough, the column, the um, Gannett News Service picked it up for national syndication so then every Saturday, it was running in hundreds of papers all over the country. Well, that's really I, great. That's really great. And I think that I think that's one of the things about your your what you do and the things that you create. I think they have a very unique style um, because I think when you go to when you look at it, I mean, it can be the same thing. It can be a wreath or, for example, and I'm just throwing this out there. But, you, you know, know, it I can have be. To say, I have to say when she does anything, you can you can tell it's crafty chica style like it. From all over anything, whether I literally, if you put me in a room with a bunch of wreaths <laughs> and you you'd ask me to identify Crafty Chica's wreath, I can obviously, I can do that. Exactly. I can do that and as a you... fan. I can do that as, uh, <laughs> but I can identify. I can, your style is very you. And it's very, it's uh, great to hear that it's kind of like, it was kind of an organic thing that just kind of happened because you. Yeah, exactly. Because if you try so hard to fit something or copy something, it's not going to work. You know, it's like the magic comes from your own individuality that you put into it. And what this taught me was, um, you know, designing for general market, but still having my own signature style to it. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't a Latina column. It was strictly a general craft column for, you know, from grandmas in the Midwest to, you know, <laughs> a, a single girl in Miami. You know, like it was for everybody. I wanted to bring the message of creativity to everybody. Like I wanted it to be an opportunity for everybody no matter what their skill level or background or financial background could say you know what i can make this project like i see it i see it now kathy you know what you're selling you're selling inspiration yes exactly and it's universal Mm -hmm. as far as the latina part that's an automatic that's me i'm the creator of these projects and so 
I didn't have to push the Latina part because that was they could see that in my name or mm-hmm. in my picture mm-hmm. or whatever. So that you know, it, and and it wasn't at the time you know that wasn't the focus of the column. And um, but what happened was I was involved in so many online communities of crafters and DIYers, and they all had handles for mm-hmm. their businesses, like the Sublime Stitcher and, you know, the Crazy Crocheter and, like, all these things. So <laughs> we were, I we... thought of Crafty Chica, and I bought the URL immediately, and, and <laughs> by the time I had my website set up. And, again, it's embracing those free resources I found um, or, or a low-cost um, website builder, a drag-and-drop program, and... So I used the internet, and once I got my site up, I thought, okay, this is where I can um, house the links to my newspaper projects, and in, in addition, I can also share my own Latina style projects that mm-hmm. I make. I see that. Mar- you, I see that marketing background coming into yeah. into play here. So you said something very specific yeah. that I I'm kind of hanging on to. So we had a conversation with another influencer, which I'm sure you're familiar with, uh, Sweet Life Bake Vianney, and she talked oh. about community. How the online community kind of uh, was was a catalyst to inspiration. Not only that, but her opportunities kind of opened. They broadened. Can you? Would you say and to tell me how important that community building was? Oh, yes, definitely. I mean, right from the start, number one, seeing what everybody else is doing, it's like a party and you want to join the party. Mm -hmm. Or it's like a moving train and you want to get on that train, too. (laughs) I like the party. I like the I like the party. It's a party and it has no VIP. Everybody's included. And so everyone has something to offer, and it's all about sharing ideas and helping each other out because back then, we didn't have Facebook. Like, um, MySpace was barely starting to come out, and so what we would do is we would comment on each other's projects on their blogs. We would share, um, you know, links with our friends or, or click on links and just all of that. I mean, that was really cool because then we all helped each other out with MySpace. And then it was also saying, hey, you guys, we need to get on Twitter. Mm -hmm. You know, Twitter, I I remember my friend Margo, she called me and she said, okay, you need to get on Twitter today. And I was like, (laughs) oh, man. (laughs) She goes, I think this is going to be something really big. And then just, you know, a couple weeks ago, I called her and I was like, you need to get on Periscope. (laughs) (laughs) I like that. You are doing phenomenal stuff on Periscope. We all still stay in touch because it's free, you know, it's a free resource. (laughs) And now, like just yesterday, I was giving a marketing presentation to um, small business owners. And at first, they're like, oh, I don't want to embrace this new technology, and I go, stop saying that, you know, look at it like it's a new opportunity to reach people, so every time there's a new platform out there, I get excited, because I'm like, wow, it's a whole new community to yeah. hang out with. And and not only that, but you you encounter new people on these other yeah, platforms, it's not, sometimes it, there's, yeah. there's no problem with the same with the same interactions that you have because those are golden. Those are the ones you want to hold on to, but you also want to expand. And on these new platforms, you get to expand and meet new people. Yes. And you have to, that is part of, that's part of the business. Yes. Is embracing new and bringing new people into things. One of the reasons I was so excited to have you on is that Dia de los Muertos is coming up and Mm -hmm. there's a lot of Dia de los Muertos inspiration in the projects that I see that you do, not just in October, but throughout the year. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about the importance or the, uh, why this has such an influence on your work? Um, Well, the biggest thing is spreading education about it because, Mm -hmm. It is a big part of our culture, and it's getting so popular. And um, I feel like us as as the Latino community or just people who appreciate and know what the tradition is about, I kind of feel like it's our duty 
to mm-hmm. to own that space and be the educators of it and be the examples of how to do it right. I am so much nodding in agreement with you, Kathy, very much um, to taking ownership of it. Yes, delivering the message. And so I try my best with all my tutorials to explain mm-hmm. what it's about and to share information and yeah, to take on it because we know it's like out of control now. It's yes, it everywhere. is. And I know. I walked into Walgreens the other day and they had they, they had like a, you know, when they put you on those side things, like right when you walk in Walgreens, they had uh-huh. the very much inspired Dia de los Muertos thing. And I, I didn't know what to do. So I took a picture. <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing is, I mean, it's, it's good that they are, everyone is loving our culture right now. Like it is in the spotlight. We're bringing this sense of beauty to everybody and they are paying attention. So it's our job to make sure that they know what it's about. Mm. And, I mean, I talk to teachers who talk to other teachers who, who have to say, okay, this isn't a Halloween lesson plan. This is something separate. And and her teacher, the other teacher is like, oh, you need to chill out. And she's like, no, I don't need to chill out. <laughs> like, this is serious. <laughs> well, yeah, you know, it is. It, is it does serious. feel like in so, 10 years, no one's going to remember what Dia de los Muertos started out as. Well, it's going to be Halloween. Well, see, that's our. That's why it's so important that we have to take ownership of it mm-hmm. and share the education behind it. You're right. You're right. So, in five years, when they start, when they search online, when they're searching for Dia de los Muertos online, we, you, you're right. We need to be some of those, uh, some of those options that come up to learn more about it. I mean, yeah. you do it in such a wonderful way, where you use these these charismatic words and these brilliant. Uh, collaboration, these these focus on these colors, and you do that so well. But not only that, Kathy, you're doing a well job of explaining what it is. I think that instead of getting mad about things, we should get excited and find a way, make sure that, that we own it and teach the education behind it, teach the history behind yeah. it. Yeah. And because you can't it's not good to be mad all the time it's not going to change anything mm-hmm. it's not it's healthy like, for you <laughs> yeah it's, it's not so healthy for the community either to turn it into an opportunity it's not going to change it's not going anywhere it's going to keep growing bigger and bigger and i mean that's why every year i get an early start and I, you know, start with the education of it. And this year, me and um, a friend of mine, another Latina blogger, we did a meaningful Dia de los Muertos blog hop, you know, mm-hmm. where we were like, hey, we're nice. going to do this. With you want to give her a shout out? Who is she? Project. Oh, uh, Vanessa Brady. Her okay. site is Tried and True, tridandtrueblog.com. Okay. And we have it all happening right now. She was her idea. And she like contacted me like, oh, we should do this. And She's like, there's so much out there. Like, let's do a blog hop with all, you know, like some meaningful stuff behind it. And so I thought that was like a really great idea. And another thing that I did, um, I looked at my search terms on my site for what was bringing people to my site. And one of the top ones was Dia de los Muertos Craft. Mm. So I went and I bought the URL Dia de los Muertos Craft. Ha. <laughs> you were um, you were named one of the most influential Hispanics on Mashable, were you not? <laughs> I, know, that is so I need you to gloat a little bit. I need this was awesome. Oh, and you know that must have been a hard category because there's a lot of social media superstars no, out there. Kathy. So I was really honored. <laughs> I was that was really cool that. I mean, I will never forget that. So, yeah, I just about fell over when I saw that. <laughs> well, that's very right. well deserved, I would say, Kathy, and congratulations. But I think oh, that. Thank- I think one of the things that's most admirable about you is that you're always so graceful and you're always so positive in terms of of the things that you do and the work you do. You know, you're always you're always very positive. And I think that's one of the things I admire most is that you always try to um, put the uh, work that you do and the community that you represent in a very positive light. Oh, thank you. And, And, you know, I always put it like 
that when I talked earlier about like wanting to be of service to the community and providing creativity and inspiration or whatever, that's my first and foremost priority. Like I never enter those contests of like, oh, vote for me for this or, oh, like I don't do stuff (laughs) for contests or to win anything. That is not my goal at all. To me, the win is just having people click to read the articles, to share them, to make something. Kathy, I know you yeah. have you have such a busy day, and for us to keep taking up more of your time, it would just it would. <laughs> no, we could, you're going to start charging us and be like, guys, I can't stay on the phone with you all damn day. <laughs> now we could keep you here all day, but I do want to close by <laughs> I do want to close by you know asking you. I know you were giving us some tips earlier, but I I would ask you what's the one piece of advice that you would give to anybody out there who's looking to build their own business or looking to follow their dream what's that one piece of advice you think so it's actually a a three-part number one you have to set a goal you have to know exactly what you want and you have to stop saying i don't know what i want you have to pick something Mm -hmm. after that you have to make a plan on how you're going to get there. And making a plan means building the time into your schedule every day, taking things off your plate to make that time, and being smart about it. And number three, following through with it. Mm -hmm. Consistency. Yes, being consistent. And even adding number four, do a check-in. after If you've been doing those things diligently, Do a check-in after a couple months, see what's working, what needs to change. But you have to have that specific goal in mind. And if it's too big for you to wrap your head around, start with smaller goals. And, That's awesome and advice. Then, listeners, right. I hope you're taking note of that. I know. All right, and Kathy. before we let you go, uh, please tell our listeners where they can find you uh, online. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, so my website is craftychica.com. And you can find everything there. I have a new site called Mucho Motivation where I have some motivation tips and for public speaking. And you can watch my YouTube videos on <laughs> Crafty YouTube. So I'm all over social media as Crafty Chica. My favorite right now is Snapchat. Mm-hmm. I'm like all on the Snapchat bandwagon. You're so killing it. <laughs> behind the scenes of everything. But oh. thank you so much for having me. This thank you, really Kathy. Fun. Thank you for joining us for another episode of The Little Radio Show. We invite you to check out our iTunes and our Stitcher channels and leave us a rating or a review. You can find the link to both channels at thelittleradioshow.com.